Let's solve some trigonometric integrals. In particular, let's consider the integral of sine of x to the m times cosine x to the n dx, where m and n, the exponents, are non-negative integers. So our strategy will be to lower these exponents m and n using the trigonometric identities that you see here. We will go case by case. Um, first, we'll consider the case when uh, the exponent of sine of x is an odd integer. So m is of the form 2k plus 1. So then the sine of x to the m is the sine of x to 2k plus 1. We put one of those sine of x's aside and the remaining even power of sine of x we'll write as sine squared of x to the kth power. Sine squared of x we can express using this identity as 1 minus cosine squared of x and that is raised to the kth power. When we substitute that back into the integral, what we'll end up with is a polynomial in the cosine of x times sine of x dx. So substituting u equals the cosine of x, we'll turn that integral into a polynomial in u, which we know how to integrate. Uh, similarly, if it's the exponent of the cosine of x that is an odd integer, so n is of the form 2l plus 1 with some integer l, then we can write this uh, um, power of the cosine of x by setting one of the cosine x's apart and then the remaining even power of cosine of x write, uh, write it as cosine squared of x to the lth power and then cosine squared of x again with the same identity can be written as 1 minus sine squared of x to the l times the cosine of x again substituting that back in the integral for the cosine x to the n we'll end up with a polynomial in sine of x times cosine x dx. So substituting u equals sine of x there, we'll turn that integral into a polynomial in u, which we know how to integrate. Now if both exponents are even, so m is of the form 2, 2k and n is of the form 2l with some integers k and l, then these uh, even powers of sine and cosine can be written as sine squared to the k and cosine squared to the l sine squared and cosine squared can be written in terms of the cosine of 2x using the two identities that you see here. So sine squared of x is 1 minus the cosine of 2x over 2 and the cosine squared of x is 1 plus the cosine of 2x plus over 2. Now this means that we manage to reduce the exponent 2k uh, um, to k and 2l to L, so half these exponents basically. Uh, once we have that, we go from there depending on what the resulting exponents have uh, for parity. Are they even or odd? We can return to one of these cases and continue. Let's solve some problems involving trigonometric integrals. Evaluate this definite integral, pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you pause it and have found the value of the integral to be 1. Well, this is the type of integral that I said we can evaluate already. Simply substituting uh, u equals the sine of x uh, will result in a polynomial in u. So you may already notice how this function is just the derivative of sine to the 4x. But let's just go uh, through with the substitution anyways to see how that works in general. So if we say that u is equal to the sine of x, that means that du is the cosine of x dx. And when uh, x is equal to 0, then u is equal to 0. And when x is equal to pi over 2, then u is equal to 1. And so we'll end up with the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 times u cubed and cosine of x dx is just du. Therefore we end up with this um, power of uh, u which uh, has u to the 4 for an antiderivative uh, evaluated between 0 and 1 gives us 1 to the 4 minus 0 to the 4 but that's just 0 so we have 1. Let's look at the next question. Evaluate this definite integral, suppose the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you pause it and have found the value to be 4. So in this case we need to lower the exponent 3 uh, in the way we've seen. So the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of 3 times the cosine cubed of x dx 
we can integrate by setting one of the cosine x is apart and the cosine squared of x um, we should write as 1 minus the sine squared of x using the trigonometric identity that says the sum of the sin cosine squared plus sine squared um, is, is 1 so this is 1 minus the sine squared of x that lets us split the integral into the difference of two integrals namely 3 times the integral of neg from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of uh, cosine of x dx minus 3 times the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of uh, sine squared x cosine of x dx now the first integral is simply th uh, 3 times the sine of x its change from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and from it we subtract 3 times the integral of um, sine cubed x over 3 so that 3 is there cancel uh, its change from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 so what, what we'll end up with is 3 times sine of pi over 2 minus sine of negative pi over 2 um, minus um, the sine cubed of pi over 2 minus the sine cubed of negative pi over 2 so let's look at these numbers the sine of pi over 2 is 1 so that's 3 um, times we have to take this um, sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1 but we need to subtract that so we add another 3 and from it we subtract sine of pi over 2 cubed that's 1 minus sine of negative pi over 2 uh, cubed so that's minus 1 that we subtract so that's a 2 that we need to subtract from 6 that's why we get 4 let's look at the next question evaluate this definite integral pause the video and input your answer in the box hope you paused it and I've inputted 2 for the value of the integral so here we can lower the exponent um, of the sine by using uh, the double angle formula for the cosine and write the sine squared of pi x dx as 1 minus the cosine of 2 times pi x all divided by 2 dx and then split the integral in 2 or integrate by terms and so we get um, x over 2 for an antiderivative x over 2 minus sine of 2 pi x over 4 pi its change from 0 to 4 will be uh, 4 over 2 simply because at 4 we get sine of 8 pi that's 0 and at 0 x x is 0 and sine of 0 is also 0 so that's why we get 2 in the end i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one